It's a pleasure to welcome all of you this evening, um, our guest speakers, both from Greece and from the UK, uh, our chair. I won't say anything more be about them because they'll be introduced by the president of Intelligence Squared following me. I just wanted to say why we're doing this event in partnership with Intelligence Squared this evening. We're committed generally to issues of inclusion and diversity in our work across the world. The Intelligence Squared Greece is a debate forum that began in Greece in 2010 with the purpose of creating a new Greek media, this cultural and cultural discussion on the most important issues that affect the community. It's not every day we have the opportunity to have such an extraordinary combination of strong spirits and opinions on stage in Athens. I mean, these, uh, these six people combined could overthrow a government. And I know some of you would like them to do that in this country. <laughs> and uh, we talked about it backstage and we decided to lay low for tonight. Ξεκινώντας από τα πρόσφατα γεγονότα στη Μέση Ανατολή, όπου βιώνουμε μία εικόνα η οποία μέχρι πρόσφατα δεν ήταν καθόλου αυτονόητη. Οι λαοί της Μέσης Ανατολής ξεσηκώνονται οργανωμένα εναντίον απολυταρχικών καθεστώτων και αναζητούν δημοκρατία και ελευθερία, χαρακτηριστικά τα οποία θεωρούσαμε πως κατέχουν μόνο οι χώρες της Δύσης. Την ίδια ώρα ακούμε τις πρόσφατες και διάσημες πλέον δηλώσεις της Γερμανίδας Καγκελαρίου Μέρκελ και του Βρετανού Πρωθυπουργού Κάμερον πως το πολυπολιτισμικό μοντέλο έχει αποτύχει στην Ευρώπη. Στην Ελλάδα ζουν νόμιμα ή μη νόμιμα αρκετοί μουσουλμάνοι, τον αριθμό των οποίων οι σοβαρότερε επιστημονικέ εκτιμήσει τοποθετούν σήμερα στι 400 με 500 χιλιάδες. Οι άνθρωποι αυτοί ζουν και εργάζονται εδώ, μεγαλώνουν και μορφώνουν τα παιδιά του εδώ. Τον Απρίλιο του 2010 ανακοινώθηκε η ανέγερση μουσουλμανικού τεμένου λίγο έξω από το κέντρο τη Αθήνα, στην περιοχή του Βοτανικού. Το έργο θα χρηματοδοτηθεί αποκλειστικά από το ελληνικό κράτο. Οι απόψει δίστανται ω προ το αν η έγερση του τεμένου θα οδηγήσει στην καλύτερη ενσωμάτωση των μεταναστών στην τοπική κοινωνία ή στην αύξηση τη πόλωση μεταξύ των κοινοτήτων, με χαρακτηριστικά παραδείγματα τι πρόσφατε βίαιε συγκρούσει στη γειτονιά του Αγίου Παντελεήμωνα, την απεργία πείνα και κατάληψη τη νομική σχολή από μετανάστε και την εκλογή ακροδεξιών παρατάξεων στο Δημοτικό Συμβούλιο. Η χρονική συγκυρία καθιστά τη συζήτηση ιδιαίτερα επίκαιρη αλλά και συναισθηματικά φορτισμένη. Είμαι σίγουρος πως όλοι μας έχουμε σκέψεις, ερωτήματα και συναισθήματα επί του θέματος. Για το λόγο αυτό και προς όφελος μιας παραγωγικής συζήτησης, σας καλώ να θέσουμε ως προτεραιότητα απόψε να ακούσουμε τι έχουν απονει καλεσμένοι το αξιοσημείο του πάνελ μας. Οι ομιλητές θα κινηθούν ένα λάξ και θα μιλήσουν οκτώ λεπτά αυστηρά ο καθένας. Θα ξεκινήσουμε λοιπόν με τον κύριο Σάντι Αγιούμπι. Μιλάμε σήμερα για ποιο λόγο χρειάζεται ένα τζαμί στην Αθήνα. Καταρχήν είναι ένα ε, στοιχειώδες δικαίωμα των μουσουλμάνων το οποίο εγγυάται το ελληνικό σύνταγμα. Δεύτερον, δεν είναι μόνο θέμα θρησκευτικό αλλά είναι και θέμα ανθρώπινης μεταχείρισης προς μια πληθυσμιακή ομάδα που μένει εδώ και πολλά χρόνια στην Αθήνα. Τρίτον, δεν είναι σωστό ούτε καλό η Αθήνα να έχει ακόμα ε, την φήμη ως η μόνη Ευρωπαϊκή πρωτεύουσα η οποία δεν έχει ακόμα τζαμί. Που σημαίνει πράγμα που σημαίνει ότι ακόμα αυτή η πόλη δεν θέλει του μουσουλμάνου. Ο, ο εξτρεμιστή δεν θα πάει στο επίσημο τζαμί για να, ε, για να κάνει εκεί δουλειά. Δεν γίνεται αυτό το πράγμα. Οι διαδηλώσει που γίνονται εδώ στην Ελλάδα ε, για ό,τι γίνεται στο αραβικό κόσμο με τη Γάζα, με το Ιράκ, δεν γίνονται ούτε στο αραβικό κόσμο. Είναι απίστευτο αυτό το πράγμα. Είναι πάντα αυτό και ειλικρινά ευχαριστούμε. Του τους Έλληνε σε αυτό το πολιτισμό που έχουν συνέχεια. Η βοήθεια που, που κάνουν οι Έλληνε εδώ, εθελοντέ για του μετανάστε, αποδεικνύει ότι οι Έλληνε αγαπούν του μετανάστε. Σήμερα το ελληνικό κράτο δεν κάνει τη δουλειά του που πρέπει να κάνει σχετικά με του μετανάστε, αλλά πηγή τι κάνουν οι εθελοντέ, οι, οι οργανώσει. Ένα τζαμί τι μπορεί να παίξει ρόλο. Ένα τζαμί δεν είναι μόνο ένα ε, χώρο θρησκευτικό που πάει κανεί και κάνει λατρεία. Ένα τζαμί μπορεί να να βοηθήσει τους μουσουλμάνους και στην ένταξη στην ελληνική κοινωνία. Μπορεί να μειώσει τα διαζύγια, μπορεί να μειώσει τις ενδοοικογενειακές διαφορές. Οι μουσουλμάνοι είναι μια ομάδα που αξίζουν να έχουν ένα χώρο για την λατρεία τους. Πόσο καιρό έχουμε ακόμη. Υπάρχουν ε, εντυπώσεις που είναι αρνητικές, αλλά αυτό δεν σημαίνει ότι δεν πρέπει να γίνει το τζαμί. Δηλαδή, το να πει κάτι σωστό, αρνητικό για τους μουσουλμάνους, μπορεί, υπάρχουν αρνητικά πράγματα, αλλά... 
το, και το ρολόι, το, το, το χαλασμένο ρολόι, λέει δύο φορέ το 24ωρο την ώρα σωστά. Mr. Murray, you can have the floor. The motion is that only good can come from building it. And it seems to me that the only people who could possibly believe that are people who are extraordinarily naive, people who are extraordinarily ignorant, or something altogether worse. Now, I'm a, not a cultural relativist. I don't believe that all civilizations are equal. I don't believe all cultures are equal. That doesn't mean I don't believe we can't all get along. But I don't believe that we have to pretend, among other things, in debating things like this evening's motion, that we do not ourselves in Europe have a history. It's also, I should stress at the outset, an important debate to have because there is a problem that Europe is experiencing with Islam. And I think we have to tackle this head on. Islam is a very, very complex thing. Uh, let nobody say that we on this side are essentializing Muslims or generalizing about Muslims or aren't aware of the huge variety of practices and beliefs within Islam. But to create a massive center at public expense in Athens at this moment should at least be questioned. Uh, let me give you an example of, uh, from my own country, from Great Britain. Um, Uh, of this kind of thing going on. Because in, in Britain we have many mosques, many Muslim organizations are funded by the government. Uh, and uh, I wanted to give one example of the sort of thing which the Athens mosque might yet become on this benevolent idea that if, uh, if the government is behind it, only good can come from it. <laughs> uh, there's a mosque in London called the East London Mosque. And the London Muslim Center is attached to it. It's really received a lot of public funding. It's routinely hosting all sorts of great dignitaries from the British political class and outside. The American ambassador in London recently graced it with a visit. The uh, shadow justice minister recently graced it with a visit. The mayor of London, Boris Johnson, graced it with a visit. Uh, even Prince Charles, the heir to the throne, he's irregular. Um, there's a, a veritable drive time at this mosque. It's hard to get to it for the number of dignitaries' cars that are forever drawing up outside. But is it the case that despite all of these grand official benedictions, that it is a place from which only good can come? No, not at all. You have to just look at the type of people who preach there. And I'm just looking over the last few years. Recently, a man called Khaled Yassin, a popular preacher, who also preaches the virtues of public beheading, saying that it would be a grand thing to have in Britain because it would teach people not to murder if they saw heads rolling down the streets. It's hosted Sheikh al Sudais, who believes the Jews should be annihilated. It's hosted Yassir Qadi, who is a Holocaust denier. It's hosted, among others, Bilal Phillips, who is a proponent of suicide bombing. And it's also, perhaps most famously, hosted Anwar Awalaki, a man who is currently uh, on the kill or capture list of that notorious hawk, President Obama. Uh, just earlier today uh, in London, a young man called Rajid Karim was convicted of an attempt to bring down airlines, blow up airline planes, with the assistance of that man, Anwar Awalaki. It's also, uh, 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 I think, worth noting one or two of the oddities of Islam internationally at the moment, and particularly in this regard. Islam, when it is in a minority, is extremely good at talking about tolerance. In a minority, Islam loves to talk about the tolerance that people must show towards minorities. One of the things, however, if you look around the world, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, is that whenever Islam is in a majority, minority rights are nowhere to be seen. It's a one-directional talk of minority rights. When Islam is in a minority, it talks of the importance of human rights. 
uh, when it is in a majority, those human rights, including the most basic human rights, like the rights of women to be considered equal beings, uh, are thrown right out the window. And I think that we also have to bear in mind that there is a problem in the world today of the direction in which organized Islam across the globe is growing. I think that there are many problems in the religion, as in most religions. Most religions have problems of some type to get over. You better hope that one of the most influential men in the world today in Islamic terms, Sheikh Yusuf al-Qaradawi, wouldn't have anything to get near this mosque, any excuse to get near it. Because he just said recently in a fatwa on the signs of victory of Islam, it means that Islam will return to Europe as a conqueror and a victor after having been expelled from it twice, once from the south from Andalusia and a second time from the east, when it knocked several times on the doors of Athens. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be naive and you don't have to be ignorant to notice that knock is happening again and you don't have to open the door to it. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say a few words about who are the Muslims in Greece because I think it is important to place the question of this debate in the proper context, in the Greek and in the Athens context. So Muslims in Greece, I mean in 2007 we were estimating that there were about 100 to 120,000 mostly Asian Muslims living in Athens. Even if we assume that all people have, be have come to Greece undocumented via Turkey in the last three years are all Muslims and no one has left, we would reach the number of 250 to 270,000. So they're not as many as some people say, we're not being flooded in any way by Muslims. The religion among these people is a factor of, of dignity, human dignity, hope, you know, su surviving, um, enduring a very difficult life. It's a factor of community, it's a factor where people get together to face their most pressing needs. And actually, it is important to say that these new arrivals, we're seeing more and more women and children, especially from Afghanistan. And actually, the very Ministry of Interior estimates there are 100 informal prayer rooms in Athens today, catering for the religious needs of Muslims who live in Athens. I think the 18th of November, the public prayer in Athens has been a turning point. For me, it has been a very good turning point. Some people say it was a very sensitive moment because in Greece, indeed, we're going through very difficult times very difficult economic times and even perhaps political times. But I think it was the first time that with a peaceful demonstration, the Muslims who live in Athens said, you know, we need a place to pray. We're here, we're peaceful, we want to live here with you, but we need a place to fulfill our religious obligations. And I think there's nothing strange to the Greeks for that, because the Greeks are quite religious, and I think they can feel close to this traditional form of religiosity more than, for instance, other European peoples can. I think a mosque would be a good thing. It would show respect. We respect you, you have to respect us. It's mutual. We need to recognize in Greece that the change has taken place and it's irreversible. I mean, Athens is a multicultural city, de facto. It's not by policy, it's not by political will. But um, no matter what we say, people will not disappear. And actually, until two years ago, when there was no crisis, they were most welcome because they were doing all the jobs that many Greeks did not want to do. I believe it's difficult to, to, to realize the change and accept it, but at the same time, I really see that there's no evil that can come from building a formal mosque.